So you've got your brand new set of paints and you want to start painting, quite understandably. I want to give you something to do that will take about 30 seconds before you start painting that will make all the difference. And actually, this applies to really old paints that you discover, as well as brand spanking new ones from the shop. I discovered a, a set of paints the other day that my grandfather had used, and they were dry as anything. And if I'd used them straight out, well, we'll see what would have happened. But I want to give you a quick tip. So inside your new box of paints, you've probably got a number of these. These are what are called half pans. They are just blocks of dried watercolour paint. Uh, inside, here, these are Winsor & Newton, which are a pretty standard make, good stuff. This is yellow ochre. Uh, it's got its name on the side, which is always really helpful for when you need to get replacements. Now, if you start off with your yellow ochre, a brush, and I know you want to get dive straight in. If you dive straight in, you will end up with really thin colour. You will end up with what people think of as watercolour, meaning watery colour. Now, these paints are capable of really intense colours if you treat them properly. But if you do this, just a little bit of water on top of a dry paint set, you will never get the colours that you want. So here's what you do. First of all, when you get a brand new set of paints or a brand new paint out the package or an old set out the lot, this is a set of what are called St. Petersburg's. Uh, they were called St. Petersburg's. I think they're now called White Knights. And I haven't used these for about five, six years. What you need to make them work is a little household water spray. Um, I found this in a kitchen cupboard. You can use the sort that you use to spray your houseplants if you like. And just each time you use your paints, wake them up. Think of them like when you buy a plant at the garden centre, you bring it home and the first thing you're told to do is get its roots wet, get it soaked. And that's what you're doing each time with the paints. You're waking them up. You're making sure that the water doesn't just sit on the surface, but actually digs down into the paint itself. And that makes a difference. So there you go, you've woken your paint set up. Do you start? No, not quite. With the paint set, you will have got, here's my old one for this St. Petersburg set, a whole load of the colours that the uh, manufacturers call them and the colours that they make. The problem is, these are solid blocks of colours. They, they never quite relate to exactly the colours that the paints make. More than that, your paints vary. Some of these colours, yellow ochre, for example, or lemon yellow, they can be quite opaque, solid colours. Others of them are really quite transparent. You need to know that. Which ones are going to lay down thickly? Which ones are going to shine through? Some colours, when you lay them down, especially on a, a really richly textured piece of watercolour paper, separate out into their constituent elements, or they mix up with other colours really, really well. And you need to know that. And these little bits of paper don't quite help. They're important so that you know which colours you're dealing with, but you need to do some work with them, first of all. So you need to find a piece of paper which will fit inside your set of paints. And we're going to do some samples. Now, the way you do the sample is very simple. You draw a little rectangle. Here we go. It's about two centimetres by one centimetre, a bit larger than that. But you don't just paint straight on it. What you want to see is how does this paint behave with water? How does it do stuff? So nice brush, clean water. Paint your shape with some water, not enough to get it absolutely soaking, but enough to get it really damp so you can see the water glistening on the page. And then take a nice brush full of the colour, which will now have a little bit of softness to it. And these St. Petersburg's or White Knights are wonderfully soft colours and really soak up the top part of that shape. Let it take up as much of the pigment as you can put up there. It'll stay inside the shape because you've just put the water there. And then let it play with gravity. Gravity is one of your best friends as a painter. Just let it flow. You will find that some colours spread out really, really well. Others behave and stay in their place. Some go lovely and thin. You're going to see some pinks for example, appearing here. Some stay 
close in their original color. You're going to do that for every one of the colors in your set and then you can take it with you when you go. So here's the one I did many years ago for this set of paints. You'll see that I actually um, changed up the order from the original manufacturer's thing. I put it in a different tin for some reason and I, I've made sure that I've got the colors in the order but I've let them behave and I've, so I can start to see whether they're thin. This colour seems, for example, to separate out a little bit. Um, that, that one's a really dark black and I never, I don't use black these days. But let the colours play. Do that kind of colour chart uh, for your brand new set of paints. Wake them up first, do a colour chart, and then you'll see what it is you're dealing with. That's the first thing to do with a brand new set of paints.